everyone. So glad you could join us today. My name is Sarah Jane Schonauer, and I'll be your presenter for the One Minute Reader Live Basics webinar. I know your schedules are very busy and you're such dedicated educators. So thank you for spending some time with us today. Um, we do have a link to the handout in the chat. So make sure you check that out so you can follow along with the handout and take that with you so you can have a resource. And then if you don't have currently have access to Read Live, which we'll talk about, there is a free trial to the Read Live programs. So you can jump in and, and try that out if you would like to. Here we go. So I mentioned the handout. It's just basically all of the slides that I'm sharing today, plus a couple of takeaways and a steps poster for you. So if you haven't already clicked on that link, go ahead and feel free to jump into that now. And we'll be covering four topics in this One Minute Reader Live Basics webinar. Why it works, placing students, how it works, and meeting various needs. So first, we'll talk a little bit about Read Live. So Read Live is the platform. If you think of Microsoft and it has Excel and Outlook and Word, that's, that's the platform. So Read Live is the name of the platform, and that's the way that students access these four programs, Read Naturally Live, Word Warmups Live, One Minute Reader Live, and Read Naturally Live Espanol. Once you have access to the Read Live platform, your students have access to all four programs. They are included. And here is a summary of what each of the programs within the Read Live platform cover. Today, we will be focusing on One Minute Reader Live, which focuses on fluency and provides additional support for vocabulary and comprehension. And I'll do a demo today and you'll see firsthand what your students will experience when they're using One Minute Reader Live. This is quite a chart, but it's also in your handout, and it summarizes for each of the programs within Read Live. It summarizes the purpose, the areas of reading that are focused on and the levels that are available, whether there's a phonics component, how English learners can benefit, and what steps require the teacher. One thing that you'll notice and we'll mention several times today is that One Minute Reader Live has students working independently. So it's a nice option for when you're assessing students or when you have some wait time and they can log in and, and do some extra reading on their own. Often we get questions about the difference between Read Naturally Live and One Minute Reader Live. So some of you might be familiar with our flagship program, Read Naturally Live, which is an intervention to help students that need extra help in reading. So students receiving special education services, Title I services, Tier 2 or Tier 3 intervention. Um, so those students can get that explicit systematic instruction with scaffolding. One Minute Reader Live is an opportunity for students to get additional practice. So they might work in Read Naturally Live for part of the time and then switch over to One Minute Reader Live to have some variety. The content for Read Naturally Live goes from reading levels one through eight. There are actually 29 levels available because many of them go in half year increments. And there's several series, sequenced, phonics, idioms, and Espanol. So that's a wide range of reading levels. Within One Minute Reader Live, we have E through five, meaning early first grade through mid fifth grade. So six levels in all. And the stories are grouped by theme or topic into different books, which you'll see in the demo later. The teacher involvement for Read Naturally Live, the students are mostly independent, but the teacher is, is usually there for the cold timing step, the first time they read the story, and for the hot timing, which is part of the past step. But teachers can be involved in any step as they actively supervise their students. With One Minute Reader Live, students can literally log in and work without direct teacher involvement. Now, we're gonna talk about reports today, you can still monitor the student's progress. You can also still sit with the student and check and see how they're doing on different steps and how they're doing with comprehension. Um, and so you can be as involved if you, as you like, but One Minute Reader Live is independent for the student. The reports, we can monitor fluency, comprehension, and phonics within Read Naturally Live. And in One Minute Reader Live, fluency and comprehension are the types of reports that we can look at. All right, so we know why it works, um, or we're gonna talk about why it works. 
And this is a research-based program. It is structured independent reading practice for developing readers of all ages. And again, the teacher um, can be as involved as she wants, but if students need to work independently, the program is set up for that. It's highly effective using the same strategy that's part of Read Naturally Live. So that Read Naturally strategy that's built into all of our programs is present here for nice scaffolding and support. And we see students improve their fluency, vocabulary, and their comprehension when they work in Read Nat when, well, Read Naturally Live and One Minute Reader Live. So these are the three strategies that make up the Read Naturally strategy. So for teacher modeling, and you'll see this in the demo, students have an opportunity to read along with a narrator. So they're hearing a computer audio, audio narrator reading every word in the story with some expression. So students can practice reading along each word in the story. That's where they learn to master those words. They learn to read with a little bit of expression. They start to understand what the story is about. And then they get an opportunity to read alone where they're doing repeated readings, one minute timings to see if they can improve their score. And so that practice really helps them with their automaticity. And then progress monitoring where we see over time how their scores are improving. Now from the cold score to the hot score, we, we usually see a lot of improvement. And then over time, we see the cold scores improving as the student continues in the program. I talked about the levels earlier. So we go from early first grade reading level to mid fifth grade reading level. And you can see it goes from more simple sentences to complex text. So there is a range um, of different types of stories. And when the students log in, they can actually access any of the levels, but you can restrict what levels they access. So if you have a second grader and you want them just working in level two and level three, you can certainly turn those levels on and off as you see fit for each student. And so there are eight books per level. So every time you see a cover like this, it means this is the, the collection of stories in a book. And then there are five nonfiction stories per book. If you're familiar with Read Naturally Live, you know that this nonfiction content is really helpful when students are doing repeated readings. It also helps them learn a lot about science and social studies. So that's beneficial for the student. There's interactive vocabulary. You can see some words that are in blue here. And when those words are clicked on before the student um, starts the timer, they can hear the word, the sentence, and they can um, learn a little bit more about what the meaning is of that word. And they sometimes get a picture for that, which is super helpful. And then there's a quick quiz at the end, mostly multiple choice questions, but there is one short answer question as well. And to make this fun for the students, every time they answer a quick quiz question, it fills in the answer to a joke jumble. So by the end of reading all the stories in the book, they have an answer to the question, why was the bug so messy? And the short answer is something that the students um, can look at the answer for after they, have, after they have answered the question to see if they answered the question correctly. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we talked about how engaging this is with the quick quiz and the joke jumble. There are also crossword puzzles that students can take part in. And there are really fun facts under the did you know part where students can learn even more interesting things about that topic. And they love to go home and tell their parents, you know what I learned today? You know, dust mites don't drink water. They take water in through their bodies. So they feel pretty smart after reading these stories. And then the way we gamify this is we put a point value to each activity that the student does. So you'll see during the demo, there's a, there's a nice sound, positive sound, and then the points appear. So the kids get excited about building up their points. And so we feel like this helps students of all ages who would benefit from structured independent reading. We know that some students just pretend to read when they're working in independent reading time. So we want to structure it so they can actually be reading the words on the page and getting better at um, their reading skills. These stories are motivating informational text. So even students who might be less fond of reading, they get excited about the topics and the choice that they have. And then possibly you have younger students that are reading material above their grade level. So let's say you have a first grader, but they're ready to read second grade material. You could have them log in and work in one minute reader at that level too. 
um, students might be working in Read Naturally Live and they might need extra practice at home or at school. So because this is a web-based program, the students can log in at school or they can log in at home, wherever there's an internet connection. So for this program, because it's independent, placement is not required. So again, if you're familiar with Read Naturally Live, there's a placement process to find the right level and goal. Because this is independent, students can choose to do placement or not. Teachers can require placement if they would like to, and they can be involved or not involved. So it's a lot of, um, there are a lot of options there. Students work independently. I think I've mentioned that once or twice. Um, the program suggests content to a student, but it doesn't restrict the stories. The teacher can do that. The teacher can say, you're only gonna work in these levels. But if the student logs in for the first time, and the teacher has not changed the story options, then they're going to be able to work in any level. So that placement process that is optional, let me show you what that looks like. So when a student logs in for the very first time to One Minute Reader, they'll get a welcome message. And in that welcome message, it will ask, would you like to take a placement test to help you select the level? And as I mentioned, there are three options. They can skip it, they can do student-led or they can do teacher-led. And if they skip it, you can always go back and revisit it so it doesn't disappear forever. So if the student says, no, I don't want to take the, the placement test, I want to skip it, then they'll be able to select any level book and story that they like, and they can move freely between levels, books, and stories. If they say yes, oh, yeah, I do want to take that placement test. If they do it student-led or teacher-led, it looks exactly the same. They select a level to start with. They do a one-minute timing. The compute Once they click on the last word read, the computer knows how many words they attempted, and the computer program can decide if it's, if it's a good fit. So I'll show you what that looks like. So again, this is the welcome screen. And this particular student is going to start at level two to see if that might be a good fit. If the teacher were here, the teacher would coach the student. If the student's doing this on their own, they can make their own choice. And then they click start timing and they go through and read the story. Now, one difference between this and one and uh, Read Naturally Live is that because the teacher's not here to count the errors, we're just doing words per minute. So it's wherever the student starts and stops and those are the amount of words that they've read. So in this particular case, the students read 34 words per minute because there wasn't an adult there to confirm that they actually read these 34 words. So part of this is a trust process. <laughs> and so as we go through, we see the recommendation from the computer program is that level two is a good fit within this placement range. And so they say, hey, seems like a good fit, and the student can move on to the next step, which would be to choose a book and choose a story. So in the back of your packet, um, if you printed this out, the handout that we have for you today, there are teacher-led placement directions. So you select the level, conduct a one-minute timing, and then there's a decision about that recommended level being a good fit. So that's placement in a nutshell. Now we'll get into how the program works. I mentioned the different levels that are available. And in each level, the student has the opportunity to select a story, which they have a lot of fun with. They really enjoy moving around from book to book and story to story. Cold read is that baseline score for the first time they read the story. The read along is to read with that narrator so they actually learn the words in the story. And the read alone is to practice to solidify their learning. And the quick quiz is to check that comprehension as well as the short answer. We know that all of these things are important, but comprehension is that ultimate goal that we want the students to be able to read fluently and understand what they're reading. So we have in your packet a um, steps poster that you can print out. We also have a color version on our website so that students can see the steps and stay on track. And then in a little bit, we'll talk about what happens when a student actually finishes all five stories and the book is completed. So to get started, students need to have access to the Read Live platform and you need to add your students, make sure that they are placed and licensed. Again, that placement is optional. 
and then teach students to do the steps. So just like any other expectation that you have in the classroom, you want to let them know, I'd like you to log in, follow the steps, you know, read along, read alone, so that they know what they're getting into. And so we have a demonstration for you of getting started where I'm going to show you what happens first in the staff member module, and then I'm going to show you what happens in the student login. So here we have the readlive.readnaturally.com, and this is our main access to the Read Live platform. There's a differentiation whether you're logging in as a student or whether you're logging in as a staff member. To start, I'm going to log in as a staff member, and you have to have an account ID and a, a specific username and a password. So I'll just put in my credentials here and then click login. Here you see the welcome screen. There's a whole section for orientation and resources. So if you're not familiar with the platform, you can go to the orientation and resources page to learn more. But if you're familiar and you're ready to get started, you can go to the home page. Here we have many different tiles and each tile has a title. And then the bullets underneath mention what you can do within that tile. So for me right now, I'm looking at my students and I wanna make sure I understand which of my students have um, licenses and which of my students are ready to use One Minute Reader Live. So I click on student administration and then student setup. And here I have a list of all my students and I can see whether they're licensed or not licensed. And licensed means they have access to the Read Live platform and then within the platform, we need to give them access to the different programs. So we have one student, Rob Test, who is not licensed. So I'm gonna click on his name. We have all of his basic information in the system, but for some reason he's not licensed yet. So I have a question like, do you wanna license this student? Because a license is available. And I say, yes, yes I do. And then it's optional whether I select a lead teacher or not. I can either, if I don't know yet who his lead teacher is gonna be, I can leave it empty. But if I know that I'm gonna be his lead teacher, I can select my name. Now the default, if you notice, once I licensed Rob, he got a license to, or he got access to Read Naturally Live and One Minute Reader Live. So he'll have access to both of those programs. I could add Word Warmups Live, Read Naturally Live Espanol, but for Rob, these two programs are the best for him. So as you can see, he does now have access to One Minute Reader Live. So I'll save and close. And I'm back to my list of students. Now, this is a great way to see basic information about whether your students are active, whether they're licensed, the last time they logged in. You can also make changes um, for different students and um, make adjustments. You can delete students, but be careful. <laughs> it does delete all their information. So make sure that that is um, something that you really wanna do. So this is a helpful screen, but I wanna show you one additional screen while we're in the teacher module. That's the student activity screen so, or tile. So we have each of the programs here listed um, with their icons and you can do a lot of things in a consolidated way in the student activity section. So if I go to the student activity um, page, I can again see all the students that are under my caseload. So I'm the lead teacher for all of these students. And I can take a look and see, oh, you know, what more information can I find out about Melissa Powell? Well, Melissa Powell is using two applications. She's using Read Naturally Live and One Minute Reader Live. And if I follow this across, I can change the story options. I can see her current step. I can see if it's Word Warm Up Live, I can see, or if she's active in a story, I can see the story or the exercise. I can see her assignment and read Naturally Live. What's her, um, what's her series? What's her goal? We have, what level is she in? In One Minute Reader Live, what level is she currently working in? And here I can change her assignment. So I can make adjustments here. And then I can see when she was active, for Read Naturally Live, I can, I can print awards from here and email families if their emails are in the system. So lots of consolidated, wonderful information here. If I want to dig a little deeper for Melissa Powell and take a look at her one-minute reader 
reports, there's a level summary report and a book summary report. So I can click on each of those and I can see how she's performing in the level or I can click on the book summary and see how she's performing in the book. So these are nice reports to um, do data analysis with and you can really see how they're doing. So that in a nutshell is some of the key steps that you will take if you're in the um, staff module. But now I'm gonna log out of the staff module and I'm going to log into as a student. So if I go back to the main page here and I click on student, and we just were talking about Melissa Powell. So let's go in as Melissa and find out what she's working on here. Again, she has her unique um, user ID and she has a password. And then we see she has two programs that she has access to or two applications. So right now we're interested in One Minute Reader Live. So we click here. Please select a book. And this is what the student will see um, if they're already active. Remember, if they log in for the first time, they're gonna see that placement message, but she's already active. She's working on some stories in this variety, in this variety pack, in Amazing Athletes. If we wanna um, reset the stories, we can do that. If we wanna see the data for the stories, we can click here. So she has worked in two different books in this um, particular level, which happens to be level three. She's um, in level three, and she also has access to level four and level five. And if I wanted to change those options, I could log in as her teacher, and I could restrict or expand what she's able to do in this level. So it's really helpful if you remember your password and accurately put it in. All right, so here we see the options for Melissa. We can decide how many read-alongs. So with that narrator, do we want her to read along one, two, or three times? For a demo, I put it at zero so we can go faster. And then read alone, I can select one to five read-alongs where she's practicing for one minute each time. And then I can, again, I can expand or restrict the number of levels that she has access to by toggling those on and off. And if she's worked in the program in a while and she, for a while and she's already knows what the steps are and how to do them, we can actually turn off the full audio directions and she can just work through the program quickly without that extra audio. You could also re restore the defaults here, but because we haven't made any changes, we're just gonna cancel out of that and close. So please select a book. If I wanted to keep working in Amazing Athletes. Please select a story. We just had the Olympics, so let's take a look at a gifted gymnast. Click Start Timing and begin reading. Click on the words you don't know to hear them read to you. Click Finished if you finish reading before the bell sounds. Okay, I'll click here, and then while that one minute timing is going, I'll just orient you to the screen here. Melissa can, when it's not conducting a timing, Melissa can uh, check out this menu here and she can toggle back and forth between One Minute Reader Live and Read Naturally Live. And we can see the title here. We can also see um, when it's available that she could select another story. We can check and see what level and book um, she's on. And we can also log out. So that's kind of that top level there. And then in addition to the title, we have all of the steps of the program here and then any points that she earns. So as you see me completing steps as Melissa, you'll see these points going up. And now we know we're on the cold read and she should be tracking, she should be kind of whisper reading and going through. If she makes an error, she makes an error. Um, you know, a lot of students that are working on fluency. Um, Click on the last word you read when the bell sounded. A lot of students who are working on fluency need help recognizing when they're making errors and learning how to self-correct. But let's say she got this far. Click next to continue. A couple of things just happened. Uh, a sound um, indicated that she got some points. So she has a hundred points now and her cold score was 48 words per minute. Again, a teacher wasn't here to verify if any errors were made. 
One other thing before we leave this page is that before you start a timing, you can turn on or off that reading guide. So this yellow guide here, some students like it, some students don't, and so it can be turned off and they can just use their mouse or their finger to track along as they read. If they finish before the timer goes off, they can also click this finish button. All right, let's go to the next page. Look at how many words per minute you read. Okay, so here is an, a visual image on a graph of what her cold score is. And now we're interested in how much she can improve her score by doing the read along and read alone steps. Click Start Read Along to read along, or click Next to continue. Okay, I'll click here for Start Read Along. It was 1976 at the Summer Olympics. A crowd watched as a small Romanian girl stepped up to the uneven bars. Click Start Read Along to read along again. So I clicked, I clicked the button again because I'm doing a demo. What your students would do is they would read the entire story with the narrator so they could learn all of the words and learn what the story is about. Um, you would be able to decide if you want your students to do one, two, or three read-alongs. And each time they read along, they would get a gold star. So for the demo purposes, I have disabled this so that I can move on quickly. But one last thing I'd like to show you. Olympics. The Olympics are athletic contests held every four years in which people from different countries compete. Okay, so any of these blue words can be clicked on to learn more about those vocabulary words. And when students do that, they earn additional points. Click Start Timing and begin reading. Click Finished if you finish the story before the bell sounds. Okay, again, these blue words are available. Before I start the timing, the reading guide can be turned on or off. Let's get started. And while this timing is going, I'll just point out some things at the bottom of the page. We have the directions for the student in both English and Spanish. And then we have the requirements for the page. If they click on this um, star, they'll get a written description of what they're expected to do on the page. When it's available, you can navigate back or navigate to the next page. We also have a space for the scores. So as the students read each time for a minute, they can see if they're improving and typically they do, and they get really excited about those scores going up. So we have a nice visual for them that yes, your work is paying off and you are able to improve your reading and they start to feel confident that they're readers and they really are able to um, feel proud of their progress that they're making. If they do happen to finish before the timer goes off, they can click finished. And perhaps that would indicate that this level might be a little too easy. Click on the last word you read when the bell sounded. Click start timing to see if you can improve your score. Or click next to save this as your hot timing and continue. Okay, so if I click next, this is going to be my final score that's graphed. So I'll go ahead and do that. Look at how many words per minute you read. And of course, this is a demo, so this might not be reflective of exactly what you would see with your students, but um, they do like seeing that their score has gone up and getting a message of, you know, affirmation that you've, you're doing a really good job and you've earned a lot of points. Click the best answer for each quiz question. As you answer questions correctly, their letters will fill in the blanks in the joke jumble. Click Show Story to see the story again. All right, so we're on that quick quiz page, and we have a question, what is the main idea of a gifted gymnast? If I'm not sure, I can look back at the story, try to find the answer, um, but I can also make a guess and see what happens. I'm trying to answer this joke jumble by the end of the book. So five stories leads us to the answer here. So why does it get hot after a baseball game ends? So the kids might be kind of in suspense about that. And so here we've got to look at our choices here and see what was that main idea. So let's try this one. All right, that sound indicated that I got it right. And then the second sound indicated that I earned some more points. 
And this one, I'm not really sure. All right. I guessed and it paid off. What does the star mean? And let's see, um, this one, maybe we'll get this one wrong. Okay, so if they get it wrong, they see that, and then it will be presented to them again. Okay. Have an opportunity to correct their answer. Type your answer, then click Next. If you have students that have trouble with keyboarding, you can have them write their answer down in a journal, or you can have them say their answer and someone else can type it, or they could say their answer orally to you. But hopefully students can type their answer into the box and then they can see. Was your answer correct? What the Check your answer and click yes or no. Then click next. So they can see what the correct answer, it doesn't have to match exactly, but it needs to have some of the um, elements of these correct answers. And so we're gonna pretend that mine is correct. Look at your results from this story. Click next to continue. All right, so this is a story summary. So at the end of every story that's completed, this screen will come up. And as a teacher, you'll get, you'll get good at looking and seeing they're on the story summary page and you might want to come talk to them and say wow look you earned you know 5600 points and you did pretty well on the quiz you only missed one and you got that short answer correct and look how much your score improved so great job it's a nice opportunity to reinforce the student and let them know that they're doing a great job look at your results from this book click next to continue and then we can see, okay, we've done two stories in this particular book, and this is our point score. And we can actually look by question type to see if there's any question that's tripping the student up. So this student's missed one detail question and one inference question. So we could do some additional instruction about um, comprehension to help them with that. Luckily, the student's has a good grasp of main idea, vocabulary, and their short answer questions. This, this is a graph that indicates how they're doing. Typically, we see the scores going up. For this demo, it doesn't exactly look as positive as it usually does. Please select a story. And she can see that she's completed two stories. That they're indicated by a gold star. And then she has the opportunity to pick another story in this book. Um, at the end of all of these stories, a crossword puzzle will um, be revealed and she can participate in that to learn more vocabulary. If she's like, oh, I'm kind of bored with um, these athletes right now, I'm going to go back and select a book. She can do that. Please select a book. If she's thinking, oh, these stories are kind of easy for me. I want to move up. She can jump into level four and she can try different ones. Um, different stories and different books. So a nice variety, plenty to keep your students busy. So now I'll head back into the PowerPoint presentation. And that was a lot more than getting started. <laughs> in, your, in your handout, you have screen by screen so that when you go back to your site or you're probably at your site right now, you can um, remember what steps we followed and what the student steps are. And you can even show this to your students and say, you know, step by step, this is exactly what I expect you to do. And this is going to help you become a better reader. And they, they love working independently because they feel so grown up and so capable. Again, this poster is in the handout um, that was linked in the chat earlier. And after a, an entire book, so all five stories in one book are completed, there are three additional things that you can look at. The book summary, the did you know screen, and the crossword. So the book summary is going to show everything about that particular book and what the student has done um, in that book so far. We're pretending that we've completed a book. So we would, we would typically see on a book summary after you've completed the whole thing, we'll see all five. And then as we look at the did you know, this is the go home and impress your parents with all your new knowledge or impress your science teacher with everything that you know about bugs. 
And so kids can learn more about this topic here. And then the crossword puzzle is unlocked after those five stories are completed, as I mentioned. And so when we look at the crossword puzzle, one of the nice things that happens is as soon as a student uses a word from the word bank, that word is then grayed out. So they know that they have a more limited choice as they continue going through the crossword. So that as they fill in, then fewer and fewer words are available and that helps, it, helps the students stay on track and hopefully get the correct answers. As we look at our last topic for our seminar today, our webinar today, we're looking at the various needs. We know you have a range of needs in your classroom, um, lots of students on different levels. So what do you do? If you have a student working in Read Naturally Live, um, the typical recommendation is 30 minutes a week, um, a 30 minutes per session for three to five days a week. Word Warm Ups Live can either be 10, 20, or 30 minutes, depending on the needs of the student, again, three to five days a week. So if you're looking at like a 45 minute block or hopefully 60 minute block, wishful thinking, um, you can have students working in both of these programs. And then when they're um, in their classrooms and they have some wait time, or if they're waiting for you because you need to be doing a cold timing or doing some assessments, they can log into this as independent practice. You can assign it as homework and they can also stay on track during the summer because these licenses last all year long. So they can log in. We have all kinds of great information about how you can communicate that to parents and students can log in and stay on track at home. This is a great program because it's independent. It's additional practice. It's a way that students can feel successful reading at home and they can also read over the holiday break and summer break. We know that sometimes when our students are off for breaks, we see them come back and maybe they've had some regression or they've had that summer slide. So this is a nice way to keep them engaged in reading over those times. We also know that students might be working in multiple programs. So if they're working in Read Naturally Live as an intervention, they can also toggle back and forth. So they might um, do this during structured independent reading, they might um, work in Read Naturally Live and they're waiting to be placed. And so they might need to get started day one. They can start with One Minute Reader Live. And they also can do this, um, as I mentioned before, during any breaks for additional practice. So one nice thing built into our programs is the reports. And using the reports, you can make adjustments. So if you see a student has logged into you know, level five, and not doing so great on the comprehension, maybe you turn off level five for a while. So you use these reports to figure that out. And so one of the reports is a story summary, which we looked at with Melissa, and that just focuses on one particular story. And then a book summary is multiple stories. So here Evie has only completed one story, but as she does more, we can monitor her comprehension and we can monitor her fluency. And when we want to access these reports, we can go into that staff member module that I talked about earlier and go to that home page, and we can click the reports tile. And once you click the reports tile, you can go to the one minute reader live reports, and there are four different kinds. There's a students at a glance that I'm going to show you in a minute that um, shows multiple students in one report. There's the level summary that we looked at, the book summary, and the story summary. So maybe we didn't look at the level summary yet. Let me show you that in just a second. Um, so this is an important page because you can decide which type of uh, report you want to look at. So for students at a glance, we see that Evie Smith here is in level two and she's completed five stories. What we do is we average the the first three cold timings and the last three cold timings. So you can compare and see if her cold timing is improving, which it is. And then the average number of read alones, like how often you know is she reading alone? And so that's important information too, because if she needs fewer practices on her own, then maybe she can try a higher level. And then looking at the final timing, well, sometimes we call the hot timing, uh, she went from 55 to 72 words per minute. So that's exciting. And then her quiz is above 80%, which is really strong. So she's doing really well. And this is great data for um, her teacher, Ms. Brown, to 
monitor her progress and see how she's doing. And so if we look at this more closely, we can see those numbers and follow along and say, okay, she is really doing well in this level. You know, maybe we wanna open up level three and see if she can do something even harder. When we're in the, um, when we're in logged in as a student and then we log in as a teacher for options, I think I showed this to you in the demo, the required read-alongs can be adjusted, the required practices can be adjusted, and each level can be turned on or off. And so the default for read-alongs is one, and the default for read-alone is two, but you can adjust that if students need more. And then for the, um, yeah, the adjustments, you could do zero to three read-alongs, you could do one to five read-alones, and then those levels can be turned on or off. So that wraps up the main part of our um, webinar today. We've covered why it works, who it benefits, how it works, and meeting various needs. We do have some nice resources on our website. One of my favorites is the Read Live Help resources. And so you can find that at readnaturally.com backslash read-live-help. And that is a really nice consolidated place to find information about all of our programs. And then we also have a specific part of that page that has to do with one minute reader live. So if you scroll down on the help page, you'll see a training course. This webinar will be posted, a training guide for your students to get them trained to how to use the steps, the actual steps poster in color a fidelity checklist, um, working with One Minute Reader Live, a placement guide, a welcome letter. So really nice consolidation here. Um, also a demo here that you can show other staff members or even your students. So that's really all I have to share today, Christy. Uh, if there's any questions, I think we have a couple minutes, but I know we're getting close on time here. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Um, right now we don't have any questions. So okay. I just wanted to remind everybody that we'll be sending out follow-up emails with links to the webinar recording in about 24 hours. And please feel free to share the recordings with your colleagues. Also, please re respond to survey questions that will appear on your screen after the webinar so we can continue to improve the educational experience for all of you and our future webinars. And please follow us on your favorite social media platform and review Read Live on our website. And have a great school year. Thank you. Thank you so much.